Welcomen, or good dag alle sammen. Today, I'm just going to read a little bit um, about uh, how to do the Årsgang. Uh, you can watch my video that I made uh, a few days ago. I'll put that, um, that video in the description below. That link is there. And that's basically speaking about how uh, the Swedish ritual Årsgang has deep pagan roots and then that was um, evolved from the Utesetting uh, tradition. So watch that video, the link is below. Um, in this one I'm going to just speak about how to do Årsgang. So once a year in the Swedish folk magic tradition uh, you would take a walk and that walk you would believe to uh, gain wisdom for the coming year, maybe have some contact with spirits or trolls or other things that I'll talk about in this text here. Um, so um, this is basically, I'm just reading from a Swedish magic book. Um, this is translated by Johannes Goebeck. Um, I'm reading from his book, but uh, the original text was from a Swedish magic book in the 1700s, and this is, I think, uh, there, there's a lot of Swedish magic books that speak about Årsgang, uh, uh, but um, but uh, this account here in the 1700s is, I think, the most detailed description of, uh, of that that we have here. So, um, yeah, I'll start reading right now. Just keep in mind that, um, that uh, this was usually done on Christmas Eve or uh, uh, New Year's in... Uh, in uh, uh, the Christian times here in the 1700s, but keep in mind um, if you are pagan and want to practice it according to that tradition, then um, uh, the date would be um, uh, Halloween. Halloween would be our New Year's. That's when the New Year started in, in pagan times. And of course, instead of Christmas, you would take the walk on um, on the winter solstice, uh, Yule, as we call it. Um, so I'll start reading now. Those who perform Årsgang will fast on the specific day and especially avoid the noontime meal and will reveal their activity to no one, especially when they are about to set off. They must not have seen any fire before they leave the house. They have seen any indoor fire on that day, they will strike with a fire steel and flint in front of themselves outside before setting out. They intend by this to dampen any hindering effect of seeing the, the other fire. They salute no one they meet, and if, they, uh, if any others greet them, they will not reply. They must not walk more than two abreast, and they must not speak as they leave the house or look back at any time. They must not smile no matter how amusing the situation nor allow themselves to be frightened. They must walk sincerely in stillness and silence. First, they set off for the cemetery. If they can find their way there and back at night, they will see many strange things. If there will be uh, many deaths in the following year, they will see people dig graves all night, and a large number of people will be at the cemetery. If the yearly growth will be good, they will see small men on the fields carrying bundles of hay, and it will seem like sickles and scythes are grinding into the stones. When they arrive at farms, they gently tap the walls and ask if anyone will die there. If someone is destined to die, they will hear a yes from the inside of the house and a no if no one will die. This happens whether or not uh, the inhabitants are awake or asleep inside the house. When a good yearly harvest is predicted, they will see mice carrying loads of grain and large cans of beer. If war will come, intense chopping will be heard in the surrounding woods as if timber is being made into ladders to storm the walls of a castle and trees cut down to be made into war machines. Many armed soldiers ride back and forward on the roads and fife and drums are heard. If the yearly harvest will be poor, then few people are seen on the fields, and people will sit uh, sighing on the surrounding stones. Fire and floods 
are seen above those farms which fortunes will end during the year to come. All kinds of trolls and ghosts will be out, so many strange sights will be seen that to repeat them all would take too long. Smiling or laughing at the events that are seen during the yearly walk is strictly prohibited, in spite of the fact that they are often amusing and exciting. Whoever violates this taboo, their faces will be forever frozen in the twisted shape as they smile or laugh. When the persons performing these walks have gone about this uh, yearly for seven years and have abided by all of the rules, a man will come up riding on the last day of the seventh year. His neck will be on fire and he will have a a rune stick in his mouth. If a person who performed the seven yearly walks is a good man and daring, he will run over and snatch the rune stick from the rider's mouth. It is said that if he then carries the rune stick, he will become very wise and he will know anything that is asked of him. He will also be able to see nine um, alnar, about five meters, Uh, into the ground and know many things that people talk about. To get a dwarf's hat, the yearly walkers must continue to do the Orsgang for another two years, so that the sum total of years will add to nine. On the ninth year, when they arrive at the cemetery, on the last night they will find many dwarves, all of whom wear hats on their heads. These dwarves play countless amusing games with each other and behave like monkeys. If the person performing the walk smiles at any of these things, all what has done for the past nine years will count for nothing, and he will have to walk an additional nine years, if he wants the hat. If the dwarves accomplish nothing through their amusements, they will then try to chase the man away with hideous and terrible visions. If that too fails, they will not be able to leave the place unless one of them uh, leaves his hat behind. Then they will wrestle the man, saying that he cannot have the hat unless he takes it with force. When dawn breaks, however, one of them will let go of his hat freely. The man equipped with both the dwarf's hat and the rune stick of the flaming rider will be held uh, as a great prophet, for he will know how to answer all questions, uh, find out all hidden things, and to do uh, all kinds of divination. Uh, without having to do the yearly walks ever again. For whatever he wishes to perform spodum, he need just to put on his hat and take the rune stick uh, in his hand. And that is about it, guys. That is um, that is one uh, instructive text about how to do the Orsgang. <laughs> you can give it a try if you like. Um, I would maybe uh, consider asking an expert about this because um, there are some, there are believed to be some dangers to this, um, to this uh, ritual or gong, um, which I will also go into in other videos, but I myself have not tried it, um, and I don't know if I will try it, actually, I don't really want to, <laughs> but I, w- I have tried ut the sit thing, and I will, uh, I will let you know about that, but the... Uh, Orsgang I have not tried, um, but I would for sure, if you do wish to try it, um, talk to an expert first, um, because there could be some danger in that, um, it, or it is believed to have some danger in that. But um, that's about all it for this video. This one was going to be purely informative, and we're going to look at other um, uh, instructions and other aspects of Orsgang and Utesitting in uh, further videos. So. Vi ses nästa gång.